Hey guys, Turk here. I hope you're having a great day. We posted a question over to our YouTube communities tab wondering what you guys wanted to see in this week's video. And guys, we are currently riding the Ethereum roller coaster and we're quite honestly witnessing the largest market correction when it comes to Bitcoin in uh, for quite a while. So it comes as no surprise that you guys wanted me to take another look at our RTX 3080 VRAM temperature guide. But you guys in the comments were doing a lot of digging and had a lot of good things to say. So today we're going to do it justice. We're going to get ourselves our new thermocouple. We're going to probe up our graphics card. We're even going to throw in an additional GPU into the mix and we're going to be throwing our test rig into our hot box. It's a 36 degrees Celsius ambient room and we're just going to see what all the temperatures on our graphics cards looks like and put this whole topic to rest. So guys, if you got air conditioning, turn it up to the max, open up your case and guys, we're going to be taking mining to the extreme. Let's go. Now, in case you guys missed the video from last time, I'll post the link up at the top right so y'all can go and check it out. But I had a couple different goals with that particular. Now, first and foremost, I wanted to confirm and verify that I could actually replicate classical technology's findings. When he was doing extended GPU workloads, he was seeing some pretty elevated VRAM temperatures, anywhere between 100 and 110 degrees Celsius on his particular graphics card. And you guys know me, I'm always wanting to see what it takes to push it to the limit. So, of course, mining Ethereum that fits the bill just fine. But on the other hand, I also wanted to investigate and see if there was gonna be any kind of long-term reliability issues when it comes to our graphics cards, since we're pushing them for longer run times, extreme heat scenarios, as well as heavy utilization numbers. Now, unfortunately, there's just not a lot of GDDR6X on the market these days, and researchers just haven't had a lot of time to do enough research there. But DDR3, DDR4, and GDDR5X are some pretty relevant memory types out on the market. And sure, it still highlights that there is quite a bit of risk when pushing our graphics cards to the limit. Now, I've got to hand it to you guys. You in the comments section, y'all have an eagle eye when it comes to the details. And unfortunately, I was being a little loose when it comes to the specifications I was listing, as well as the types of measurements that I was reporting. Now, two of the three different specifications that I was looking at, primarily the zero to 95 degrees Celsius uh, specification, that is actually referring to the T case measurement, which is actually the physical uh, temperature of the casing for the GDDR6X module. That would be like right between you know the memory module and your thermal pad on top of your heat sink. Now when I was reporting values I was reporting what was coming from hardware info and that is in fact the T-junction measurement and that's actually a little diode inside of the die that's reporting the internal measurement so it isn't really directly comparable but I will say that one of the specifications listed was in fact using T-junction. However, it was comparing GDDR6, not the GDDR6X like our 3080, but it still is pretty relevant because we can hit some pretty impressive temperatures even with the different type of memory. And as reported, it sounds like 110 degrees Celsius on the T-junction seems to be NVIDIA's throttling point. So we're gonna be able to confirm that and see if that's gonna be enough to save us from hitting that T-case threshold. So taking all of that into consideration, in today's video, we're going to be bumping up a notch in order to answer all these different questions. Now, I went ahead and picked up a new uh, digital thermometer with four different K-type thermocouples, and we're going to be probing our graphics card in a couple different locations in order to see what that T-case measurement actually looks like. I'm also going to be using a couple different settings within our afterburner in order to see what it looks like with the default settings, a max fan settings, as well as using some optimized settings as provided by NiceHash. And a lot of people on the internet recommend adding additional fans to increase the airflow in your case. And considering the placement of our graphics cards, I thought that throwing in an additional exhaust fan might help us out there. So we're going to be comparing it both on and off. And lastly, and what I think is actually the most important thing, is what does it look like when we put our system inside of a hot room? We've actually got a server room, well, it's kind of a multi-purpose, you know, guest room, server room hybrid. We've got our file servers, game servers, and we've got a couple different mining machines in there right now. And it's currently right around 30 degrees Celsius, which is actually pretty warm. But once we put in uh, our mining rig, it's going to get upwards to 36 degrees Celsius, which for any of you guys here in the States, that's like right around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And also, I forgot to mention, I've got myself an RTX 3070, so we're going to be throwing that into the system in order to kind of simulate what like a multi-GPU mining scenario would look like, or even kind of simulate what a low uh, airflow system would look like. So with all that hardware in mind, guys, let's go ahead and kick it into gear and take some thermal measurements. 
Before we get too deep into the data, let's take a look at our measurements. For comparing our TK spec, that's the red line there, we'll be using all four of our thermal couples and we're gonna be probing the top, the right, the left, and bottom of the GPU die. Since I'm limited on the amount of probes, I'm gonna be looking at the middle module in each of those locations and reporting that case temperature in the chart. With a nominal room temperature of right about 24 Celsius, I see that the right and left locations appear to be the hottest locations, and we do see a sizable increase in temperatures when installing the second GPU. This is due to the lack of airflow coming into that GPU. Increasing our ambient air temperature of our system, we see a sizable increase in the temperatures across the board, with the hottest location being on the left side of the GPU die. Overall, it looks like with one GPU installed, we are still safe when it comes to the T-Case 95C threshold, but with the limited airflow in the two GPU configuration, we do in fact get close to failure. In fact, upon closer inspection, I'll cycle some pictures here from when I was doing the experiment, there are instances where the fan ramping and the thermal throttling, it just isn't quite fast enough to prevent our memory from reaching nearly 100C on the T-Case measurement. However, I don't think there's a time requirement on the official specification, but for now, we're gonna be reporting our five minute average for temps going forward. The next readings will be coming directly from hardware info, and these represent the thermal junction temperature of the DRAM. Shown in blue with only a single GPU installed, we are pretty safe in terms of T-junction, especially with our tweaked settings. However, even in a nominal ambient room, we do in fact hit the thermal throttling ceiling of 110C with default settings engaged. Even our custom settings get eerily close. Moving into our 36C ambient room, we now start throttling with two GPUs installed, both with the default settings and with, our, with or without the max fans. As long as you have a single GPU installed and are applying maximum fan speeds, you should be in the clear. The next setup I want to compare is if having an additional exhaust fan helps us out at all. As we saw in the last few charts, we're pumping out some major heat into our system. Let's start with a single GPU in the normal room conditions. Regardless of the settings, we see that the temperature's only moving between one to three degrees with the new fan. Inserting an additional GPU into the mix shows a similar delta. However, we see some instances where the extra fan helps and other instances where it actually hurts. Moving it into the hot room, we see improved results with the exhaust fan with a single GPU. However, each condition is in the clear in terms of the spec. But once we get that second GPU installed, we start to thermal throttle and in fact hit that 95C TK spec on each of the default setting configs. Here, the inclusion of the exhaust fan increases our temps by three degrees. With such mixed results, I think it's up to the builder to test and decide if they need it to help their setup. Moving on, let's now take a look at the difference it makes between a normal 24 degrees C room and a hot 36 degrees C room. With one GPU and no exhaust fan, we see a larger temperature increase with our customized settings when compared to the system default setup, which is right about six degrees Celsius. Adding in an additional GPU really hammers our airflow quite a bit, and even our normal air conditioned room will see thermal throttling without tweaking our settings. And man, that hot room data puts a hurt on our system. Both of our default setups thermal throttle within minutes, and we do in fact break the TK specification in short bursts of time. The reported averages here embrace the fact that the thermal throttling, which drives our temperatures down, but given enough time, the NVIDIA safeguards can only throttle down so much before the thermal runaway occurs. Let's take a look at the number of GPUs installed. With one GPU installed, we usually don't see any cause of concern for violating the specifications for either T-junction or T-case. However, installing two GPUs, or heck, even running your GPU in a confined enclosure, it's gonna drastically impact your overall T-junction temperatures, causing thermal throttling. Again, guys, tune your GPUs. Moving our system into the hot room makes things even worse. Again, single GPU setups seem to be in the clear here, though default settings are starting to get a little bit toasty. As we saw with our nominal room, the additional heat causes us to both thermal throttle and violate the T-case with the default settings. However, tweaking the settings for each of these GPUs helps mitigate that risk, but the temps, they are a little bit spicy in my opinion. All right, man, well that was a bunch of data guys and I hope this is enough to answer some questions, but let's net it all out. 
First and foremost, guys, it's highly recommend that you guys tune your graphics cards when you're gonna be doing some mining. We saw many instances with the default settings and even with just modifying the fans, it's just not enough to keep our graphics cards in quote, safe territory. So by using some optimized settings, we're gonna be able to protect ourselves from any thermal issues, but we're also gonna be increasing our hash rates and of course, making a little bit more money on the side with our gaming rigs. The other thing we noticed is if you're only gonna be using a single GPU, even inside of our hot room at 36 degrees Celsius ambient, you know, if a single GPU really isn't gonna be pushing the limit when it comes to their thermal th our thermal thresholds, be it the T case, that which is zero to 95C, or even going into the NVIDIA thermal throttling threshold with T junction at 110 degrees Celsius. But if we're gonna be using the dual GPU setups, it's almost mandatory to tweak your settings in order to keep your power limits in control and to make sure your fans are gonna be kicking in and working as you are hoping. And for anyone that's not convinced, we saw several instances when using just the default settings inside of the normal ambient air, like 24 degrees Celsius, we are still hitting thermal throttling scenarios when we let it run for long enough. The second big takeaway for this entire experience is make sure you're getting proper airflow in your entire room as well as inside of your own case. Case selection will be critical for anyone that's gonna be doing any GPU mining and heck, even your fan placement inside of your case is gonna be critical. I recommend putting two fans closer towards the bottom in order to get a little bit of airflow into your graphics cards. You, you may or may not need that exhaust fan like we found, but you know, you're gonna to have to tinker with that and see if it's gonna be optimal for you. And if you're gonna be running with multiple rigs in the same room, be careful with how all that heat's gonna be circulating. In our particular room, we have uh, computers in all the different corners, and guys, it gets really hot in there, so maybe it might be better to make sure your doors are open, you've got an external fan blowing cool air into your room. Just keep in mind that your ambient air is gonna be influencing your temperatures, and that could induce some failures. And last but not least, make sure you pay your electric bill, guys. I would hate for you guys to go on vacation since crypto is going to be going back to the moon and you're sitting there drinking your Mai Tai and then you're thinking, oh man, I forgot to pay my electric bill. And then your AC kicks off and your mining rigs go shut down and your profitability goes down. So I highly recommend you, you stay on top of things inside of your ambient environment, which of course should be a no brainer, but I just want to put that out there. And of course, the most important thing of all to consider is that guys, these graphics cards are consumer grade components and they are built with some consumer grade assumptions in mind. So when putting these inside of a new type of use case, you need to take those assumptions in mind when you're formatting and making your environment. Because sometimes, you know, if your air conditioning goes out or if your ambient air gets too high, sure, NVIDIA's thermal throttling mechanisms will protect you in a single GPU setup, but if you're gonna be running dual GPUs or if your ambient air gets just too hot, NVIDIA's fail safes might not be enough if you leave it long enough and some thermal runaway does actually happen. But that's gonna be the video, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments if I missed anything, if I need to probe up a GDDR6 GPU to see if we actually can hit that 100 degrees Celsius T-junction measurement. As always, you guys can join me over on our Discord. We talk about all this stuff and I've posted a lot of these thermal charts over there for y'all to check out. Uh, I think links are down in the description. You can always reach out to me directly on Twitter, at the Turk. Now, thanks again, guys. I hope y'all have a great night. We'll catch you in the next one.